That's the sound of a Subaru Impreza N10. The driver, Arthur Blake Jr. The occasion, nothing. The reason, because he's on Revved Up tonight. Welcome aboard. I'm Andrew Kabura. Let's get this show on the road. On this edition of Revved Up. If you drive an older vehicle, you may notice that the weather stripping or rubber door seals have started to pull away from the seams of the car trunk. Consequently, rainwater, dust and other pollutants may be able to enter the boot. In some cars, the water may be diverted to a collection system beneath the boot, which you should empty if it is filled. Simply stretch the rubber seal back over the seam and snap it into place. If the weather stripping is severely worn out or damaged, consider getting it replaced by your mechanic. Unveiled at the 2015 Frankfurt Motor Show, the Nissan Grips stunned the motorhead world with its audacious design and unique concept. It is a compact crossover intertwined with a sports car, or, to be more precise, the Nissan 240Z Rally car that famously won the Safari Rally in the 1970s. These cars were unique because of their raised height, an unusual feature for a sports car, and the same design can be seen on the grips. It has wide set wheels and an angular exterior that gives it a bold stance and a fearsome look unmatched by other crossover vehicles. Although some critics were skeptical of the idea of a Z crossover, Nissan has won many of them over with its attention to detail and superior creative design that is reminiscent of the past while embracing the future. The interior of the car is sporty as well, featuring bucket seats and a racing car steering wheel. The white, black and burnt orange tones evoke the essence of the original rally car, but the technology inside and the modernity of the rest of the vehicle is purely futuristic. There's a floating digital display screen, a chronograph-like gauge system, and the car doors open in a fashion that's only comparable to that of a spaceship. In the world of crossovers, the Nissan Grips is probably one of the most inventive concepts that we have seen. Although its power capabilities are yet to be revealed, it is likely that it runs how it looks, an SUV on steroids that somehow manages to be sleek and sporty as well. The future of Nissan is looking very bright indeed if the geniuses behind concept design have more hybrid vehicles like these up their sleeves. All right, now with all this happening here in Busika, with the bikes and, and, and the cars and kids arriving, I've had to keep on my social media because I've also had to send out pictures and reply to messages uh, for those of you uh, who are on our social media. Do that right now so you can get a quick feed for yourself. Revved Up Uganda is our Facebook page. And in case you want to watch any of these shows all over again on YouTube, our official channel is Revved Up Uganda as well. Do that, then you can know what happens with the rest of the crew and behind the scenes at places like these ones. So this week, as we continue enjoying the sights and sounds of Busika, we also try and make sure we get you cars again. We do that every single week here on Revved Up with Checky. Now, the official website is checky.co.ug, but this week we are showing you cars that actually have the best resale value. Now, often uh, you meet folks who tell you, I bought my car at price X, but when I tried to resell it, I really was in at a loss. Now, we are showing you cars that you pretty much can buy and resell in the region of the same price. So we are showing you the best resell valued cars. Take a look.
Alright, so your prayers have once again been answered. As the sun really, really comes down hard on me, we are once again at uh, the Motorsport uh, Arena. We are in Busika, where we are trying to focus on speed, trying to focus on endurance and trying to look at some of the champions as well. On set this very week, I'm joined by the champion himself. A man, if uh, you've been anywhere near the motor world with competition and rally and motocross, you certainly have heard his name before, Arthur Blake Jr. Arthur. Thank, Thank you very, very much Thank for accepting us to come here. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. I'm looking forward to... To the big interview. The big, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, thank you very much, first of all. As you can see, behind is this big machine. We shall be talking about that very, very shortly. Uh, but I tell you what, most of the folks out there will know you in motocross. Uh, they will know you as a 10-time national champion. Uh, they will know you as someone who did everything with, with a motorbike coming off most of, those, most of those humps as well. Why not change, Arthur? Why not change? Um, uh, to, to be honest, uh, motocross, uh, motorcycle racing is my first passion. Yeah. And motor running is my second passion. Yeah. And uh, right now I'm, I'm into running. Mm. I came into running uh, once again uh, a short while ago. Mm. And uh, yeah, I was uh, lucky to win the 2015 National Rally Championship. Yeah. I'm the reigning National Rally Champion. There you go. Uh, I hope you knew that right from the beginning. But before uh, we move on to your rallying uh, career, uh, I would really want to first go back to, to motocross as well. Uh, and maybe first ask, going into rally, was it something you had at the very beginning? Was it a thought or it's something you had midway the journey? You said, you know what, I can probably get into a car. <laughs> um, uh, actually, yeah, it is something that was in my mind. My dad, mm. my dad and my late uncle Paddy Blick, they used to race bikes and used to race cars as well. So I guess the enthusiasm came from my, my, my dad, my parents. And uh, basically it's something that I wanted to do. Uh, however, the timing, uh, motor rallying is very expensive. Of course, motocross is very expensive, but uh, motor rallying is even more expensive. So um, once, once the pocket gets a little friendly, and that's when we decided to venture into motor rallying. And when you turn to rallying now, uh, just getting a machine, uh, for example, uh, a vehicle like this, mm. a package of a vehicle like this is $45,000. And that's just the package. Then there's the actual what you need for the competition. You need tires. Yeah. Uh, uh, a good tire will cost you easily 1.5, 1.7 million shillings. And uh, if you go for the second grade tire, then you'll get flat, flat tires all the time. So you need to invest in uh, good quality products and so that you're, you're more competitive. And... That's what makes everything way too expensive. Uh, you were in bikes, that is motocross. Yeah. You came to rally. What did you have to change as a person? What, 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 is, what was your mindset? What is the major difference in the minus what we really see? Um, actually, I guess rallying is uh, less risky. Mm. Uh, the fact that you're on two wheels on a motorcycle and now in a rally car you're on four wheels. Covered. Yeah, you're covered. You're not the bumper. On a motorcycle you're the bumper, you're the bonnet. Yeah. In a rally car, you know, you have, you're well protected. Uh, you kind of go for it, 100%. It's like last year when I won the National Rally Championship, many ride, dri rally drivers started complaining, oh, he seems he's rallying an, uh, an illegal engine. <laughs> yeah. seems Because, uh, you know, I came from motocross and they didn't expect the blob. Yeah. Well, I, I, I won the National Championship, hands down. Yeah. Uh, it was not a fluke. And, uh, yeah, it kept them kept many rally Guessing drivers talking yeah. yeah but when you come from motocross to motor rallying i guess that that change is uh, it's a very comfortable change yeah. because uh, you'll be more daring uh, in the car you'll be more aggressive because you know you're safer yeah. the fact that you're in in a cabin and uh, yeah i guess uh, for for advice for our viewers out there you know um, if they want to join motor rallying they should first come into motor. Just, just don't do this at home, isn't it? <laughs> just don't do this at home. But uh, my final question, and I'm, I'm really rushing these questions because I want us yeah. to go to the car and see what the car looks like. Uh, for how long are you going to do this, Arthur? For, for how long are you going to do this? I mean, yeah. we've talked about the financial strain it comes yeah. with. Uh, we've talked about the hard work it comes with. We've talked yeah. about the, the physical strain it comes with. You have kids now yeah. who you want to make sure you push forward. Yeah. For how long are you going to do this? <laughs> That's very true. Actually, at this point in time, my biggest challenge is the financial part of everything. Yeah. Um, as long as there's finances, I'm able to do this. But however, uh, it's taken a big toll on me. Uh, the, the finances I spend in motocross, the finances I spend in motor rallying, mm. it's taken a tremendous toll on me. I'm very thankful to my sponsor, Shell Helix Motor Oils, who have supported me uh, immensely. Without them, I wouldn't have won the 2015 National Rally Championship. Mm. 
and they're supporting me till today and I'm very thankful. However, we still have to dig deep into our pockets. Apart from the sponsorship, which takes care of, say, about 40% of our budget, the rest of the 60% comes from deep in our pockets. And uh, to be honest, uh, it's taking a toll on me uh, financially. I believe I would be at another level uh, business-wise. However, all my savings, all my uh, capital is kind of going into the spot. Into the spot. And uh, that's, that's not a right move. Yeah, uh, but let's go into the car so you can show us okay. what improvements you've made on the car. And you probably have never entered a rally car, have you? You don't know what it looks like on the inside. Okay, let's go to the car. All right. Ta. Welcome to my Subaru Impreza N10. It's a ProDrive build car, rally car. And uh, yeah, I'll show you a bit of the features we have in here. Uh, first and foremost, we have the safety harness. This is a five point safety harness. So we have straps at the bottom, one from the bottom, and that's what makes it a five point safety harness. And uh, when we go to the car, we have uh, the control pan over here. It's, it's pretty much standard, however, uh, a few things are a little different. We have the clutch pedal, the throttle cable, and the uh, brakes at the bottom. And then we have uh, this control panel over here. Uh, you have uh, the fuel pump. To start the vehicle, you have to switch that on mechanically. You have the, the anti-lag uh, button way by you have to fit that on manually. We have the relays and uh, the cutoff switches over here and the fire extinguisher. Uh, in case the car catches fire, you just pop a button and uh, the automatic fire extinguishers will go off. Further to the safety, uh, we have the roll cage. This is a safety roll cage. It's made out of uh, specific special uh, material. Uh, this is very tough. As much as you see it's thin, it's very strong uh, metal. So in case of an accident, in case you roll over, this uh, framework should keep you safe and intact. We have the intercom unit whereby uh, we use this to communicate between me, myself, and the navigator uh, because it gets pretty noisy in here as you drive in the off-roads. It gets quite noisy and uh, you need to be able to listen and hear what your navigator says to you and you say to him. We have uh, other gauges. We have the turbo boost pressure gauge. We have the oil pressure gauge, which is, uh, that's not standard. Uh, that's only for the competition cars. Uh, we have the temperature, we have two temperature gauges, and uh, that's also not uh, um, standard. We also have the comps. Uh, my navigator is able to tell, uh, he has the comps panel, which also will show him the speeds we are doing, the average speeds, and uh, the fuel in the vehicle, and uh, pretty much what, what I have here, he, he has in this unit and is able to, to know what's going on in, in the vehicle. Um, we have uh, uh, what's not standard as well is the hydraulic handbrake. This is a, a hydraulic handbrake. The most regular cars, the standard cars, just have a, a mechanical uh, handbrake which uses cables. This is more effective and uh, very good for the handbrake turns or hairpin corners. Um, yeah, I think uh, pretty much this says most of it, and uh, uh, I guess let's let's go for a ride now. Now, guess who the navigator is? Myself. Yes. All right. Let's go, Adam. Let's go. Just have a feel of what it feels like to be on the inside. It's quite scary. Can't lie. So I know we are going to hit uh, a, a home stretch somewhere, or yeah. probably shall speed. Uh, but the one question I wanted to ask you first, um, what's the difference uh, from a driver's perspective uh, having this for a manual and having the normal street car for a manual? Um, uh, this manual, um, it's, uh, technically it's called a dog box, yeah. uh, meaning you can shift gears without having to press the clutch. So the, for rallying you need to minimize uh, the time wastage, so yeah. they believe that pressing the clutch you waste a few, a few seconds. seconds yeah. So a dog box, you just crush it in, and that's the major difference. All right, I'm, I'm honestly scared, but so I'm, I'm done talking. I'm done talking. Let's 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 do this, other. I'm done.
you also must know the entire truck almost off head. Yes. It's important to know what it looks like in different corners. We'll just do a, a start. Yeah. How we usually start. So you always start from here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the straight away. So. Can, I, can I tell you something? I'm sweating. I'm sweating. <laughs> I, you, you, you even look emotionless in your face though. You've done this so many times. So this is always where you start from. Yeah. Alright, let's do it one more time. One more time. Thank you very much guys for joining us uh, this very week here on Revved Up. We are down in Musika. I've had an experience in the car. Something I will never, ever, ever do again. It's very scary. Funny thing is you enjoy it when the rest is finally done. We shall see you guys on Wednesday next week for now. Good night and just make sure you stay revved up and please make sure you keep safe as well because we're just trying to make sure you are safe and you enjoy the experience on those roads as well as we rev through the week. Good night. Next week on Revved Up.